In my previous video, I said, I'm not saying that aliens don't exist. That's a topic for another day. Well, that day has come, because tonight we're covering the incredibly strange abduction of Kelly Cahill. And it all begins in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. August 1993. Kelly was 27 years old at the time, and she was driving home from visiting a friend with her husband. They were heading down Belgrave Hallam Road near Sunset when she noticed a string of bright orange lights in the sky over the road ahead. In interviews, she said her first instinct was that it was a blimp just overhead, but as they got closer, they noticed it was something not from this world. The orange lights now seemed to be somewhat separated, and Kelly claims that they could make out the outlines of tall figures standing inside the craft. She exclaimed to her husband, There are people in there, and the craft took off to the left. Shaken but not deterred from getting home, Kelly and her husband continued their drive, but their encounter with the craft was not over yet. According to Kelly, only one to two kilometers, around just a mile, down the road, there was a wall of lights across the entirety of it. Only moments after seeing this light, Kelly seemed to have warped through time. She said they must have covered at least a kilometer in distance in the brief period that she couldn't remember. The incident shook the couple for sure, but a few weeks following this strange event, Kelly was able to recall what took place in the small bit of time that she seemed to have blacked out. And it's incredibly strange. The Tall Black Humanoids If you remember, Kelly told her husband that there were what she believed to be people inside the craft they'd seen just a few miles back. She was partially right. There was something aboard, but it was not human. Kelly slowly began reliving her encounter as the memory of that lost time came back to her. She said her husband pulled the car off to the side of the road and began walking toward the aircraft that was hovering once again, this time in a large field. Kelly said they weren't fearful of the craft. As a matter of fact, they felt beckoned to it as if they had no choice. What happened next was, as Kelly described it, science fiction come to life. A second car stopped on the side of the road and the tall black humanoids made their first appearance. The humanoids, which there were around 7 or 8 in all, stood 2.1 meters or 7 feet in height and were so dark many have said it seemed as if the matter itself had been removed and what was left was something like that of a black hole, just absolute nothingness. These figures with bulbous heads and large red eyes glided across the ground over to Kelly and her husband. Another group of the creatures glided to the other individuals that pulled off near Kelly and her husband. We will learn more about them later. As the creatures approached Kelly, she claimed she felt a low-level frequency throughout her body, and it was then she began feeling incredibly worried and scared about what was taking place. She said in an interview, in my life, It was like some sort of low-level frequency that came in waves, but it was so dense that I could actually physically feel it going through my body, and that feeling absolutely terrified me. It was like... Uh, I can't even explain the horror that I felt just feeling this, and uh, I uh, began screaming. With the creatures now only a short distance from her, she screamed out in fear and blacked out. When she came to, she was lying down on the grass. She said, I thought I was going to die. I thought if I don't get up now, I'm never going to... I'm going to pass out and I'm going to die. I'm not going to come back to consciousness, you know, so I pulled my... The couple made it home without any further encounters, but the horror Kelly felt only returned when she began getting ready to go to bed that night. An article published four years following Kelly's abduction states, Kelly discovered she had a red triangular mark beneath her navel in a small cut above her pubic area. The article goes on to state that Kelly began menstruating and was later treated for a womb infection at the hospital. 
other eyewitness accounts and possible connected events. I can't find the full names of the three other individuals who were in the other car the night of Kelly's encounter, but their first names are Jane, Glinda, and Bill. Jane and Glinda came forward not long after Kelly did, recounting a very similar event. They even submitted sketches to UFO researchers that looked strikingly similar to Kelly's. Jane and Glinda were only able to recall the events of that night following hypnosis, but claimed to have been taken onto the craft at some point. They too, like Kelly, were said to have a small triangular mark just below their navel. Keith Basterfield, a UFO researcher, also made mention of an incident that took place some years before Kelly's encounter. In this instance, the craft described seems very similar to that of Kelly's story. A man named Paul, a 54-year-old caretaker, said he was woken up at one in the morning to some kind of screeching, whistling sound. The article reads, quote, He was able to get within a 15-meter range of a strange craft and observe it for several minutes. It had a white dome and circular lights or windows around it. As it took off, a black tube as its base inflated with a loud bang. It left a 10-meter ring of blackened grass that was still evident a year later. Paul also saw the craft hover over a water tank in the distance. When he inspected the tank, 45,000 liters, roughly 11,800 gallons of water, had vanished overnight. As I said, the description of this craft is strikingly similar to the one Kelly, her husband, Jane, Glinda, and Bill witnessed. Speaking of Jane and Glinda, their encounter with the humanoids seemed to have been much more severe than that of Kelly's, which could be why they have not come forward. As I stated before, all the women had small triangular marks, which seemed to be burned just below their navel. However, Glinda and Jane had something else. Three small red dots were discovered on their inner thigh. Glinda's can be seen pictured here, and Glinda also had what looked to be ligature marks around her entire ankle. She was the only one with this mark. Finally, there were three small patches of burned grass where the craft was said to have touched down. As we can see in one of the women's illustrations, there seems to be some kind of tripod coming down. This corresponds with the marks found on the ground, and again, it is similar to the encounter Paul had. Theories and Explanations There honestly isn't much in the way of theories for this case. Being there is physical evidence, the triangle under the women's navel, the marks on the ground, and the numerous marks on Glinda, it feels impossible just to write it off as some kind of calculated hoax perpetuated by those involved. As we've seen with numerous other abduction stories, Kelly did go on to write a book about her experience. Of course, this was met with some criticism, as some say this whole ordeal was orchestrated for money. I just find that hard to believe, though. If that was the case, wouldn't everyone involved want to get a cut? They would have written about their encounters as well, I believe. Instead, the other two women have stayed relatively to themselves about this encounter. There is only one thing about this case that I would like to see, and I didn't think about it until I heard the host of the Paranormal Thoughts podcast mention it. He said, If everything lines up from the story of them, you know, no one actually knowing one another, but then they'll give the same story, if that can actually be um, proven in the sense of, I would like to see the documents um, of this sort of taking place, then sure, it's a fucking great case then, because that's... That's awesome that people or that three different parties witnessed this pretty close up. What do you guys think? I'm in a bit of a... Conclusion. I can't write this off as a hoax, nor can I completely deny it. The story is quite extraordinary, but there is so much to it that it's hard to explain. It feels far too large scale to be a hoax, and there seems to be no real reason behind the theory anyway. Personally, I believe Kelly, her husband, and the other three individuals did see something that night. As far as their abduction, 
I find that hard to dismiss as well. The marks on their bodies were photographed and documented and are free to be seen online. Kelly has also been regarded as an honest, trustworthy person, and in the interviews I've seen, she comes off that way. Furthermore, she's kept her story straight for years following the encounter. Articles from three to four years after have interviews with her recounting the events as they happened. Every detail is in place, and nothing seems to be changed or exaggerated. Of course, you could say that's simply her having time to rehearse her story, but I just don't see it that way. Something happened that night on Belgrave Hallam Road. Hey everyone, just want to give a quick thank you to everyone for taking some time out of their day, afternoon, or night to give this video a watch. I know these UFO abduction stories are kind of hit or miss for the channel, but this one was just too much to pass up on. Uh, Kelly's story is incredibly, incredibly strange, and I think this is one of the first abduction cases where I believe there might actually be something there worth looking into, which is why I took the time to tell her story and get it out there, because I personally had never heard of it before. But I'm sure some of you have, and if you haven't, then I hope it was interesting enough to keep you here till the end, because I have some really awesome stuff. We have new merch in the store, I'm calling it the Take Care line, and if you use the code Xmas, you can get 25% off your entire order. You can take everything in the store and put it in your cart and get 25% off. You can buy a sticker and get 25% off, it doesn't matter. Use code Xmas to get you some Take Care merch and support the channel. If you want to do, if you want to support the channel, in a different way, you can join all the beautiful people you see on screen and become a channel member or pledge over on Patreon for some awesome rewards, most notably early releases. You can see videos a day before they go live to everyone else. If that sounds like something you want to do, you want to support the channel, those are the best ways to do it. Thanks again everyone for watching, listening, take care of yourself, and take care of each other, and as always... Stay safe out there.